Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about my leveling experience in Guild Wars 2 as a new player. Before we get started, here's a little background story about myself. I've been playing WoW for 15 years, and I ran dungeons, battled it out in Arathi Basin, stuck through all the expansion updates, even after grinding so hard for gear that was easily replaced. I stuck with you, Blizzard. The fantasy realm, the characters, the abilities, were something that I needed to keep going back to. I had goals in WoW. To make my own guild, make a ton of gold on the auction house, have enough time to raid with my friends. But all that changed when the game turned into a giant checklist for me. Battle for Azeroth really killed the game for me, and turned WoW into a chore, not a fun game. Toward the end of playing WoW, all my friends quit. I ended up making YouTube videos on how to make gold in the game because it was a popular niche to explore and something I've always wanted to accomplish. I've always wanted to pay for a WoW token by running old raids, by getting raw dungeon farms, by farming popular material spots, buying things low on the auction house and trying to sell it higher. All that to make 168,000 gold in order to pay for one month's playtime. I created many characters with all their expansion professions and leveled them up so I could sell special mounts and trinkets that were very popular and expensive. But then I took a step back and realized I didn't want to be playing an economic simulator just to save real life money. The fun was sucked out of it and I needed a change. And in comes my good friend Eric, who's been asking me to try Guild Wars 2 for years now. After hearing him tell me how he grinded for his first legendary set four years ago and that this one set has lasted him, the rest of his character's career in the game just blew my mind. Because in WoW, one set of gear maybe lasted you a patch or an expansion. Then it was back to grinding a new heroic or mythic dungeon to get the newest gear. So after that conversation, I went and I looked up a bunch of Guild Wars 2 videos, thinking this game would be a real game changer for me. I downloaded the free version from my iMac computer at the time and tried it out. It didn't hit the notes I wanted. The quests seemed boring. I was overwhelmed by the number of races, professions, and maps that I played for one night. And then I went back to WoW the next day. Fast forward to the present day. Six months ago, I had a conversation with Eric again. You guessed it about Guild Wars 2. I stumbled across a video on YouTube by another Guild Wars 2 creator that gave me a brief overview into what new players might like about Guild Wars 2 who are coming from other MMOs. Once I saw the new elite specializations and the number of cool mounts you can unlock with the Path of Fire expansion, I had to log back in and give the game another go. This leads to today and the point of why I'm making this video. I wanted to create this video to give insight into Guild Wars 2, what it's like experiencing it as a new player and somebody who came from another MMORPG like World of Warcraft. My wife is not a gamer by any means, but she loves Guild Wars 2. My friend from college has never played any MMORPG before in his life, but he loves Guild Wars 2. My hardcore gamer friends who have played other MMOs now play Guild Wars 2 and love it. The beauty of Guild Wars 2 is that there is something for everyone. If you want intense PvP arena tournaments, they got it. If you want scalable dungeons with increasing difficulties to test your skills, they got it. You want larger raids where a dedicated guild team can test out different character synergies and defeat it? You want large open world bosses that reset quickly and drop high quality materials? You got it. Would you rather decorate custom guild halls and make your character the most fashionable person in your guild to win Fashion Wars custom runway show that your guild mates built from scratch in your epic guild hall? Oh yeah, yeah, do that too. Or are you more on the, into the economics of video games and love being the person who can drop tons of gold in an instant with no worries? The possibilities are endless. And that is exactly why I was skeptical of this game from the beginning. It's impossible that one game can nail everything right? Well, I was wrong. Guild Wars 2 is the most casual, hardcore game you can play online with friends. This didn't happen overnight, no. Over many years and many updates, this game has improved to the masterpiece that it is today. If I had to rate the game in its current standing, it would be a 10 out of 10. And as an ex-WoW veteran, let me tell you why I think so. First. 
we're going to go over the leveling experience. Being a WoW veteran, I never imagined doing anything else besides talking to NPCs, picking up quests, and completing those quests, then returning the item into the beautifully satisfying yellow question mark. Ooh, did that feel good when I used to play WoW. You would return the quest, it would be complete, and you would get gold with it as well, especially if there were high-level dailies. Guild Wars 2, there is no yellow exclamation point. There is no yellow question mark. There is no yellow exclamation point, but there are different map activities that you can complete in order to level up. Exploration is a big deal in Guild Wars 2. Hearts are your main source of experience, which are closely related to quests, but each starting zone has different types of puzzles, infestations, invasions, battles, or towns that need your help defending them. When the heart meter fills up to max is when you complete the heart and you get a nice chunk of experience and a little bit of coin, which is copper, silver, or gold. It feels less linear and more explorative without penalty. You can buy the gathering materials for your level and gather, gather things along the way like ore, herbs, or wood to gain experience while exploring. Climb mountains and hills and buildings to see beautiful cutscene vistas, defend NPCs while they deliver goods, and defeat mini-bosses that reward you with hero points for your character, all give you experience towards leveling up your hero. Once you hit level 10, you can start using your hero points to put them in your Guild Wars 2 skill tree, or as they like to call it, the build system, which is the most fun part of Guild Wars 2 in my opinion. One of the most customizable talent trees I've ever experienced in an MMORPG. Unlike other MMORPGs where you're locked into using either a melee weapon, ranged weapon, or magic, or a holy trinity setup like damage tank and healer, Guild Wars 2 allows for swapping your weapons on the fly. When swapping weapons brings up a whole new secondary set of abilities for your profession. Not gonna lie, this was a little bit overwhelming for me at first. And I recommend sticking to leveling one character at the start of the game, just to understand the different skills that your character possesses and the different way that they can use them in utility situations like groups or open world or dungeons. Starting off on WoW as a new player is very straightforward. You have weapons your character is allowed to use, but the only difference between them is the amount of damage, speed, or range. Heavy armor wearers like plate wearers and World of Warcraft never use ranged weapons in endgame situations. But that's not the case in Guild Wars 2. Here it is very viable to see heavy armored classes using ranged weapons. This leads me to the meta of Guild Wars 2. Yeah, every game has a meta that the hardcore players will follow or new level 80 players will adapt because of the vast amount of options. It makes it easier for people to play together when certain tactics are expected from a certain profession. Granted, you will always have people who try out new builds and make their own custom groups slash teams to try out different bosses I found in Guild Wars 2. Different builds for different types of gameplay. And now would be a good time to tell you to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Also, I stream on twitch.tv slash Gigan every weekend, so please go follow me over there if you want to follow my journey to Tyria more closely. With that being said, let's get back into it. Gear. Now, gear in Guild Wars 2 isn't grindy. Unlike WoW, you don't need a new set of gear every expansion. The biggest gear grind you will have is crafting or saving money to buy a legendary weapon. When I hit max level, level 80 in Guild Wars 2, my friends recommended a set of exotic gear. And I asked what the difference is between exotic, ascended, legendary. It was just confusing to me. So, first tier when you hit level 80 is exotic. Then it goes up to Ascended, then it goes up to Legendary. They said Ascended and Legendary gear only have a 5% boost of stats. So the stats between Exotic and Ascended and Legendary is only 5%. Please, if that's incorrect information, you know, correct me in the comments, but that's what I know at this time. To my knowledge, with Ascending gear, you're able to add these things called inscriptions that give you the gear extra procs, like extra stats, extra movement speed, critical chance, maybe it's a hot or a dot, whatever it is. Um, the difference between Ascender and Legendary? Legendary gear and weapons are account bound, not character bound. That's not a thing in World of Warcraft. When you get your first Legendary weapon, it is stuck to that character forever. 
unless you are able to tra um, have a transmutation on another character to make it look like you have that weapon. But once that expansion is over with, that weapon is useless. In Guild Wars 2, legendary gear and weapons are account bound and they're not character bound. Oh, by the way, legendary weapons in Guild Wars 2 are craftable. All of them. So if you have three heavy armor characters, Revenant, Warrior, and Guardian, the piece of gear, the one legendary piece of gear that you craft can be used on all three. You can also swap stats on the fly with legendary gear where you cannot do that with descended gear. So after learning this, of course, the first thing that I wanted to do was use my level 80 character boost from when I purchased the game to boost up heavy armor characters, then grind for a legendary weapon, said my inner WoW player. But I'm not going to, at least not yet. And I don't recommend that you do if you're new to this game either. You see, in Guild Wars 2, it's not essentially about the gear. It's about the horizontal progression the gameplay with other players, and the fun that you have along the way. It's a casual, hardcore game. And the game makes it as, gives you as many options and as many avenues as you want to be hardcore. You can grind tons of legendary gear. You can try to fight every single boss. You can try to climb the ladder and fractals and PVP all you want. But you don't have to in order to have and enjoy the game. Unlike World of Warcraft, you are required to do specific quest lines in order to get, say, a trinket or a cloak. Looking at you, Battle for Azeroth. In order to participate in simple things like mystic, mythic raids or dungeons, or even like raids. When it comes to Guild Wars 2, it is the most accessible game that I have come across. So a person in exotics is just as viable with somebody in ascended or legendary gear as long as they understand the mechanics of the game. Guild Wars 2 mechanics are very important. Definitely different than WoW. The enemies in, in World of Warcraft are harder than in Guild Wars 2, but the mechanics are easier. So once you reach that ceiling and understand the mechanics in Guild Wars 2, then every encounter should be okay for you. But you're not going to be stuck behind a gear wall where you need to already own legendary or epic gear in order to even be a part of the raid group. Speaking of mechanics, every class has a heal. Yeah, you heard that right. Every class has a heal. Every class can dodge and support allies. And the split second that you don't use said skill could mean life or death. Long gone are the days of standing in one spot on my hunter or mage going through simple skill rotation in dungeon slash raids, relying on my gear to get the boss down properly. In Guild Wars, almost all skills can be cast while on the move. To those of you who used to PvP in WoW, this might actually be a selling point for you. I know I love jumping around, kiting around corners, and trying not to outdistance my opponent while still pummeling them with damage in WoW. Well, that's pretty much every encounter in Guild Wars 2. <laughs> the combat is super fluid, high speed, and reactive. Depending on the enemy, there are different types of attacks that you have to dodge. Every attack will require you to react in order to survive. In the beginning of the game, you might think it's really easy like I did. But wait until you hit level 80 and encounter your first elite, or join the first open world boss that you, that you come across. These will open your eyes to the difficulty and fun which is Guild Wars 2. The last part of this video, I wanted to talk about inventory management. At the end of my WoW career, quote unquote, I was farming for gold. And in order to be productive, you had to have a really organized system where you can sell your items, make sure you have that easy access to all your characters who have different gathering professions. Well, guess what? In Guild Wars 2, every character can gather. Every character that you have can be a gatherer. You don't need a specific profession in order to be a gatherer in Guild Wars 2. In World of Warcraft, you need to actually create a character in order to be a gatherer, preferably a druid because they can transform instantly, fly around, and they can gather nodes while they're in flight form. And then when I started playing Guild Wars 2 and I went to my first profession trainer, I found out that you have access to a material storage. And there's a little icon in your inventory that allows you to deposit it into a material specific storage. 
So each specific gathering material has its own slot and you don't have to organize it yourself. And that alone made me extremely happy. And some Guild Wars 2 veterans are probably overloaded with the amount of storage that they have. Um, 250 is the max, and I'm sure you have to pay gems in order to increase that storage or just have a another bank tune or a side tune or whatever where you have tons of inventory that you can just put all of your gathering materials to sell. Um, so I can see how inventory wars in Guild Wars 2 is a real thing. Um, but in my eyes, the organization still is a lot better in Guild Wars 2. I wanted to end this video by saying that Guild Wars 2 is free. It's free to max level, it's free to try out, it's free to create up to three characters. And at the time of recording this video, there is an option to create three new characters um, for the open beta to test out new skills. That'll only last a few days, but I think now is a good time than ever because these new Elite Specializations will be released in February 22 with the upcoming expansion, End of Dragons. So now is the perfect time to join and catch up because there's plenty of content to play before the new expansion. And um, thank you for watching. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video.